Hope you saw last week's program. If you didn't, don't forget you can go to YouTube and look for Have a Bible Question on our YouTube page. Uh, you're not only able to see our TV episodes, but also our Have a Bible Question live. But last week we talked about what, how does God view gender? Or what is the Bible's view of gender? Or what does the Bible say about gender? In doing so, we went to Genesis chapter 1 primarily and noticed that from the very beginning, God created man and woman, male and female. Another way of saying that is that he, biologically, he created man to have the XY chromosomes and he created woman to have the XX chromosomes. And in doing so, there are certain parts of their anatomy that are created in certain ways that allow for procreation. Uh, this is very important because if that wouldn't have happened, then we wouldn't be able to be here today. In fact, the command was that God said that Adam and Eve were to replenish the earth, to be fruitful and multiply, which we noticed by going on into uh, some chapters there that um, Adam knew his wife Eve. And so a male and male or a female and female couldn't do that. It required for two genders, a man and a woman. And so in noticing God's design, we were able to answer this question of how does God view genders and actually answer what is the, the standard because as creator, he is the one that has set everything in order and so he has told us how things should be. We also talked about the reality that there are many people confused today. It's not that they always have an ill intention, but something has just in their mind caused them to think something else. This is a great tool that Satan uses against us in so many different ways, is to confuse man. He wants to try and take the Bible, the standard, away from us. He tries to prop up false standards. And you have people going out advocating things that, you know, like uh, you can have a male body but actually be a female trapped inside, or you can have a female body and be a man trapped inside. And there are people that are hearing this and that already have the confusion that's there, and so they are going out and trying to be transgendered or they practice homosexuality. And I realize that uh, those don't always equate exactly in some people's minds, but that's part of the problem. And that's why God does not use like terminology like homosexuality, but instead he'll go to places like Romans chapter one, and he talks about males with males. And he's going back to something that is very clear that could be defined and saying this is that which is unrighteous, it's wrong. That women should not be with women, that males should not be with males. And so people sit there and they say, well, I don't like that, or they, they don't accept that. Well, I remind us, we've got to go back to God's word. Now, when we discuss this, we also deal with what makes a real woman. In fact, we're gonna do four, a four part series about what is a real woman. And uh, then following that, we're going to do a four-part series of what is a real man. Because with this confusion, a lot of people have false standards or false understandings about what makes a woman. And certainly, it's the XX chromosomes that causes them to uh, be a woman when it comes to the anatomy. But being a woman actually goes beyond that. It's fulfilling the role for which God has created her for, just like a man needs to fulfill the role in which God has created him for. And we also have these messages that are out there that are very confusing, especially to our young girls, that are trying to tell them false standards about what they need to be or who they need to be. It's the idea that many young, young girls, especially because of Facebook and Instagram and back in the day because of magazines and TV shows, they think that what makes them a woman is how pretty they are or, or whether their body sizes are a certain, certain way. But that's actually not what scripture says. There's also many people that have a false understanding about what God says about women because they will assert that Christianity tries to say that women are weak, that they're not smart, that they're not valued, which is absolutely just a lie because that's not what God says at all. So here on Have a Bible Question, I always try and give you a Bible answer. So what we're going to do is we're gonna to go to God's word and we're gonna answer the question, what is a real woman? I want to thank you for joining me, and I look forward to studying this question with you. I love reading and studying my Bible. In fact, I really enjoy studying God's Word with other people, whether it's face-to-face, -face, online, or through Bible correspondence courses. One of the favorite parts of my week is to come in and take a 
uh, an envelope where we have sent somebody a, a course already with a postage page envelope. They've completed it and they've mailed it back to me. And I then take the course and I grade it and then I write a letter back to them with the next lesson so that they can continue studying God's Word. Would you like to take a Bible correspondence course with me? If so, we want you to call us, write us, or sign up online at your earliest convenience so together you and I can study God's Word some more. You know, when I read God's Word, it actually aggravates me at the absurdity that people have to assert that the Bible does not place emphasis or value upon a woman. The problem normally comes back to is because they don't, in today's society, want the woman to be valued because of her relationship with her husband. But let's just be real about this. If you go back to Genesis chapter 2 and you have this detailed account about creation, remember he created man first and he says it's not good that he should be alone but that he would create a help suitable or a help mate for him. Part of God's original design was never for man and woman to be alone, but rather for them to come together into the marriage relationship. And yes, that helps define who we are. I am defined by the fact that I am a husband, that I am a father. Uh, I am defined that I am a Christian, and I don't find any shame in that. In fact, it's my wife that helps make me who I am, and I am a better man because of my wife. And my wife would be willing to tell you that she is a better woman because of the relationship that we have in our marriage relationship. And so in this attempt to try and to um, somehow increase the value of woman and to take away uh, the marriage, and let me remind you, Satan is destroying homes left and right. And I believe very strongly destroying society because he's destroying the home. What he's trying to do is to make women feel like if somehow their value is found because of their marriage relationship, then that's a bad thing. But it's not. Look to God's Word with me. In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4, A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. You know, And so when you go into this scripture, it's trying to explain to us that a woman is of value and is something that actually ought to be cherished and prized. And so we go to Proverbs chapter 31. In fact, for this episode, we're going to stay in Proverbs chapter 31 because what we have is the virtuous woman described. And we're going to break this down into sections. We're going to notice verse 10 through 14 start when it, we think about what is the value or what is the price of a virtuous woman. Now, it's important to point out uh, before we start reading in the text here, the word is going to be used talking about a virtuous woman. It's not talking about all women because there are some women that are out there that are ungodly, that are unvirtuous. And their price, as we were reading in Proverbs chapter 12, is not very valuable. In fact, it says that she'll be rottenness to his bones. Another passage of scripture says it's better for a man to dwell on a rooftop than in the house with a brawling woman. And so uh, it's the kind of woman, the godly woman, the virtuous woman that is truly of value. And I encourage every woman watching this to make sure that you are living your life, that you can be described as a virtuous woman, that you are a godly person. I encourage every man that's watching this in, to, to search out and to find that kind of woman as a wife. You don't need one of these women that, that even Proverbs would describe as playing the role of the harlot because she is so loose that she's worldly and not following after godliness. Let me challenge parents and grandparents. Train your children and grandchildren to be a godly man, and in this case, a godly woman, a virtuous woman. But we start reading in verse 10, Proverbs chapter 31. It says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. I stop here because this kind of reminds me of those MasterCard commercials when they're talking about the value of something. There's a lot of things you can buy with a MasterCard and you can slide it and you can purchase it. And perhaps it's like going to the ballpark. You buy the tickets for the baseball game. You buy the hot dog. You, you buy the uh, souvenir cap or something. And then at the very end of the commercial, it'll say something to the effect, a, a day spent with your son, priceless. That's kind of the, the idea of what the, the Proverbs writer, through inspiration of God, is saying here. He's saying, if, if you find a virtuous woman, 
What is her price? It is above rubies. It's priceless. All the money in the world could not put a value upon her. And he goes on in verse 2, because this kind of woman is, is the woman that the heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. And so we start seeing in the value of this woman is she is somebody that is trusted. The husband is able to count upon her, to talk with her. And sometimes we think about these uh, perceptions and the confusions caused by the world that say, well, you know, the Bible says it's demeaning to, to women and they're not smart. No, actually a woman is a very smart, uh, women are very smart and intelligent. And in this, it's talking about the idea that he trusts in her. He knows he can talk to her. He can seek her advice even. There, he's able to count upon her. Look at the next part. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. And so we start seeing, you know, part of her value is because she is the type of person that is going to be able to be trustworthy, counted upon, that he doesn't worry about going out here and, and being uh, worldly or being with other men, uh, of trying to seek his harm, uh, revealing secrets. She's the kind of woman that is going to be trying to help him, the, her husband, all the days of her life. You go into the next verse, it says, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She's like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. And, you know, the world today teaches that, you know, women have to always have a glass of wine in hand as far as the way they're depicted on TV. They got to have these girls nights, girls trips going everywhere and they're out there uh, spending the money because all they like to do is shop because that's supposed to be fulfilling to women, which by the way, the reason they continue to shop is that if you try and find uh, value or fulfillment in shopping, you're just going to have to keep shopping, aren't you? But in this, it describes a woman that says, no, she's not going to be wasteful. He trusts in her. She is actually an industrious woman that is able to take what she has and turn it into providing for her family. So what we've noticed so far is that a real woman, according to Proverbs chapter 31, is one that has great value. Her value is not found in her outward appearance, as the Apostle Peter would talk about in his epistles, but her value is found in the relationship she has with her husband because she is a woman that he can count on, that he can trust in, that is going to have a lifelong relationship that is not one that is going to do him harm but good, that she is going to be the industrious person that's going to be helping him along the way. Don't go anywhere. We're going to continue to discuss what God says about a real wo woman in Proverbs chapter 31 right after this short message. No matter what else is happening in the world, you will always find good news today. A proud partner of Have a Bible Question. A part of our program every week includes a question that Guyton and Troy answer for our viewers. Good News Today can be seen on many of the same television stations that air Have a Bible Question. You can also watch the program on our website, gnttv.org, or on your phone through our apps. We also have a channel on Roku and Apple TV, as well as episodes archived on YouTube. We'd love to have you join us. Since 1987, the Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies has been providing college-level Bible classes tuition free. In fact, I myself am a graduate of the school. I'm excited to announce that we are now 100% online, offering you the opportunity to utilize these courses to help you grow in your relationship with God. You can learn more so that you can prepare yourself for the next semester at nwfsbs.com. So we've already noticed that the real woman, you know, the biblical, godly, virtuous woman, she's of great value. In fact, her value is more than you can even put a number on. It's, uh, according to scripture in Proverbs 31, it's more than all the rubies. Now, I realize that some people don't like what God's word says because her value is dependent on what she is doing. And part of what she's doing is the relationship with her husband. But after all, isn't that the whole reason women were created? Oh, I know somebody watching this is probably getting mad right now, but Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 in creation God created woman because he said it's not good that man should be alone, but that he needed her. 
He needed a help suitable, and he created the perfect companion. Remember Genesis 2? There wasn't an animal that existed. There was no part of creation that would work for this. And it was so important, he designed woman, both not only physically, but even in the intellect and in the emotional. Every aspect of her was created to be able to be fulfilling to man. And that's why, as we've already noticed in this episode, she is able, her husband is able to trust in her and counts on her and needs her. Let's keep going in Proverbs 31, and we're going to notice that part of a real woman is one that cares for her family. If you start looking in verse 15, it says, She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it with the fruit of her hands. She planteth a vineyard. Now, I know a lot of jokes are made about keep the woman in the kitchen, or a woman go make me a sandwich, or something like that, but Let's not confuse what truth is because of humor and sometimes even crude humor. Let's be very clear about something. Even in my house, while my wife does a lot of cooking, I do as well. There's nothing in the scripture that says a man can't go in the kitchen and cook. In fact, I would encourage many husbands to be a help to their wives. The, the marriage relationship, and I encourage you to go watch some of our past episodes, the marriage relationship is one where you are helping each other. But part of the care that a woman is able to provide is the idea of that nesting instinct, the idea of providing. I still remember my wife chasing our children around, uh, trying to make them eat. It's something I think my grandmother uh, or her mother did uh, with uh, her children because she was always worried about, are they going to eat enough? Are they being taken care of enough? Uh, because she wanted to make sure they were cared for. I always sat back and was kind of like, well, they eat when they're hungry. Uh, and my wife thought that was a very calloused approach. But that's part of that difference between men and women. Women are very nurturing and they care for that. And so here's this woman that is very strong. She's industrious. She, according to Proverbs 31, she will even rise up early to make sure that her family is cared for and provided for. You notice here in verse 17, it says, She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. I think a lot about my grandmother when I read this, not to slight any other woman that's been in my life, but uh, I think about my grandmother in particular, and how many late nights she would be up working on quilts, that she would be sewing something, making repairs to the clothing of our family, that she would be getting things ready for the next day so that she could prepare the breakfast or the lunch. And uh, that's the woman that's described here. She's not a lazy person. In fact, the world today, I think that's part of the problem we have, both in men and women. Uh, we're going to be talking about men later, but this is talking about women, so let's focus in on that. Is that you got a lot of women that just simply want to sit on the couch. They want to uh, just let somebody else take care of things for them. And there is a laziness that exists. But a real woman, a virtuous, godly woman, is one that is industrious, that she is focusing early morning to late at night, making sure that her family is provided for. Now, before we go to commercial break, I just want you to think, how much would society change if every woman that was in the, our world today, or just here in the United States, or just think in your local community, if every woman would just start focusing on being the virtuous, godly woman, that she is faithful to her husband, to be there to support him, encourage him, that he trusts in her, and that is busy providing, making sure that her family's cared for. I tell you what, a lot of this drama, a lot of this garbage that exists in society would simply stop existing. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back, and we're going to continue to see what God says a real woman is. Hi, I'm Guyton Montgomery, one of the preachers here at the Church of Christ at Milestone. Paul admonished Timothy to exercise himself unto godliness. We try and do this at our congregation through fellowship, prayer, worship, and of course, Bible study. We would like for you to take advantage of the things that we offer. You can learn more at cocmilestone.com or have a biblequestion.com or go to nwfsbs.org. Better yet, come visit us in person where you'll receive a warm, loving welcome. When I study God's Word, it amazes me how many references there are to scientific things. But sometimes I struggle with that because I'm not always the best in science. That's why I'm thankful for Apologetics Press. 
they produce materials from Bibles to books to children's material that helps us as Christians to be able to understand how God's Word and science relate. I want to encourage you to go check them out at their website, apologeticspress.org. See them today. So as we're answering today, what is a, a real woman? We've noticed that that real woman, the virtuous, godly woman, according to God, is of great value. We've also noticed that her husband trusts in her, in her. We also notice that she cares for her family. The next part is also found from Proverbs 31, where it talks about this virtuous woman, and it's that she cares for the needy. We're going to pick up reading right where we left off in verse 20. It says, She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. And I love this because it's in talking about the needy is that she's busy caring for other people. We notice that with the family, but it also specifies even those that are without. We're going to be noticing in a later episode about this, talking about Lydia and the care that she showed towards other people by using her skills in tapestry. And so I think about my grandmother. I mentioned her earlier. She was a great influence in my life. I think about all the time she helped other people other than just her children and grandchildren. She was known to, to make bears for uh, hospital. She was known to be able to take her sewing skills and to be use those not only when she worked outside her house, and she did, she worked for Benchcraft many years sewing pillows. Uh, she not only used the, those skills for to create income, she was able to use that to help other members uh, of the church as well as the neighbors that surrounded her. When you read this, as we did, and noticed in Scripture, you notice that she's able to sell her goods outside. Some people say, well, a woman can't work outside the home. Well, actually, this describes a woman that is able to take her wares, her goods, and to be able to sell them. That's outside the home. Remember earlier, we considered the idea that she buyeth the field, she planteth it, and she's able to use that not only for the care for her family, but for others as well. Now, in this, we always see an emphasis to the home. The emphasis is upon the home, that that is her first priority. But in that care, she is able to even go outside the home to help other people and to be create resources so that her home is able to be provided for. Uh, again, it bothers me greatly when people want to act like somehow God's Word uh, depicts a weak, uh, in, dumb individual uh, when it comes to women. No, when I read Proverbs 31, this is a strong woman. This is a smart woman that is using her abilities to not only care for her husband, not only for her children, but for all in her household and for those that are in need. We keep reading though, we notice that she is one that speaks wisdom. It says verse 26, she openeth her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. I want to pause just a minute there because in today's society, for some reason, we tend to uphold and, and, and look to some of these loud, boisterous, uh, vulgar women in their speech and think that somehow that's a real woman. No, it's not. Uh, a good, godly woman is one that is meek in spirit, as Peter would say. And in this case, her tongue is one of kindness. We go to verse 27. It says, She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Let's understand something. What makes a real woman is not just the fact that she's valuable or that she loves her husband and he's able to trust in her. It's not just that she cares for her family and helps the needy. But what really makes her a real woman that lets her do all these things is that she feareth God and she allows God's law to rule her life. We're going to be back here in just a moment with a few final thoughts. I hope you're enjoying the program. I want to tell you about a great opportunity that you can have your Bible questions answered. 
Every single Tuesday night, I'm joined here in the studio of the Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies by Troy Spradlin, Jeff Orr, and Ray Brantley. Together, we answer questions with Bible answers. So join us every Tuesday night at 630 by searching for Have a Bible Question on YouTube, on Facebook Live, as well as our website and a podcast afterwards. I know the things I've been talking about probably are not popular, but after all, this is Have a Bible Question, where we give you a Bible answer for your Bible question. And all we've done today is go to God's Word and talk about what does He say a real woman is. A real woman is one that is virtuous, that is godly. I want you to look back with me at Proverbs 31, the very last closing words. He says, Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Now in this, it talks about that she had the praise of her husband. She's going to have the praise of her children. They rise up and call her blessed. But that's really not the praise he's talking about. Because look at the last verse. It says, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. After all, scriptures tell us that we're going to be judged by the things that we have done here on this earth. And it's saying that this woman is going to be of not only value, but she's going to be rewarded because she took the time to be the wife, the mother, the woman that God created her for. See, this world, they're trying to tell women they need to be all these other things. And there's a lot of things that women can do and they can go out there, but what was she created for? I think about pocket knife. This pocket knife was intended to cut. Now, I have a lot of pocket knives that if you go to the tip, the tip is broken off. And the reason being is, is I use that knife for something other than what it was created for. If I would have simply used it for cutting, it would still be whole. But because I'd use it as a screwdriver or as a pry bar, I would often damage it. Friend, let me tell you, because we don't look to what a real woman is according to God, we have a lot of women that are being damaged today because while they can do certain things, it's not what they were created for. And in doing so, we're doing a great injustice. We need to be teaching our young ladies, bringing them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord to find value in what she was created for, not what the devil, what society has told her she should be. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells of...